the root, the, the, the left child of five. So let's see how that works. So first thing we do is break that link from two to five, and instead have two refer to five's left child. Okay. Now five's now pointing to two things. That's not good. What do we do? What do we change about five? We have it point to two. Two becomes a new left child of five. Okay, and then what else do we have to do? What's, what else is wrong about this? Break two's parent child. Right, whatever thing is pointing to two now has to be changed to point to five. So we just swapped three references. And there's, finally, there's one final important thing. Who knows what it is? Yeah. Well, okay, uh, yeah, it depends on what, what algorithm we're using to keep track. My, my thing is, you've got to grab hold of that, that, that thing right there, you just add it, and you've got to shake. <laughs> <laughs> to get that. <laughs> so that's, that's what the, all the balancing al al algorithms have in common, is they, uh, they do rotations to bring things into balance. And they differ in how they decide when and where to do rotations. Now, if you ever in your life are tempted to implement a balanced binary search tree class again, rethink it. I'm sure you found that it wasn't easy to do. There are other ones that are even harder to do than ABL trees. What you want to do is use one written by someone else. <laughs> Same thing goes with hash tables. Okay, now, then we get to the hash table problem. What was the fundamental problem there? Why did it blow up? Or the hash function works. Right. If the hash function doesn't work very well, if everything gets hashed to the same bucket, uh, which it's hard for the hash table to defend against, because it just sort of an, collisions will occur, and if the elements that get added just all very unluckily happen to have the hash to the same thing, we're out of luck. So uh, what we want, the best we can hope for is a function such that the probability of two randomly chosen keys hashing to the same bucket is just 1 over m, where m is the number of buckets. And that's the property we want from a hash function. That randomly chosen keys will uh, be hashed uniformly through the table. Um, and you can design functions to that property, but you can still be incredibly unlucky. So again, here, let's focus on the sort of the expected behavior, the average case behavior, instead of the worst case. Now, we can deal with the fact that you have to occasionally double the size of the table and rehash with the same kind of amortized analysis we did. So I won't redo that here. Um, but if we, uh, if we do that, this is where we end up. We've improved all the worst cases for uh, binary search trees. And we're now looking at the average case for hash tables. And Basically, operations are, the worst case on the binary search trees are log in. The worst, the worst case for the, uh, the, the average case is constant for the hash table. So why would you ever use a binary search tree, a balanced binary search tree? I don't see any, any place it wins. Yeah? Um, it depends on like, how you want to organize your data, right? So if you want to have like, a tree representation of your data instead of like well, we're, okay, so he's saying it depends on how you want your data organized, but all I, all I care about is I have a set abstraction. I don't care, why do I care what's inside? Uh, I'll take you. Uh, oh, behind me? Or no, you. Oh, uh, there are things you can't hash. So if, there's, okay. if you have something you can't hash, well, you need to hash. Okay, so you may, it may be expensive to hash something. You can always hash it. There, there are things that which hash, code, hash functions are not built into the language. And it may be expensive to hash. But you can't use a binary search tree for everything any, either, right? You have to be able to compare things. So, yeah? Uh, you have to uh, reserve a lot of space to keep the load factor down for hash. Okay, so it could take more space. Yeah. If you want to come out in sorted order. Okay, that's, that's the big one. If you want to be able to iterate in some order, in some sorted order, then you need a binary search tree. Otherwise, you should use a hash table. 
So if you've got the choice of the two, use a hashtag unless you need the sorted order. Yeah? I was going to say consistency as well because both the best and the worst case for the binary search for our login, whereas you have the chance that your worst case will show up in the hash table. Well, that is true. If you can't, absolutely cannot deal with the catastrophic worst case, which I'm hiding here with the average. Again, if you've got your spaceship, your nuclear reactor, and you, it, it, you know, the, 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 the damage coming from hitting a worst case is catastrophic, yes. You want to use a tree. Yeah? Uh, duplicates? Well, you get, there are dupli you get duplicates. I mean, you, you, tell me what you mean. One element in the hash table of the same type, right? You can only have one, one in the hash table, whereas binary search, you can have two ones. Okay, yes, but. For our purposes, anyway, we, we assume that we're doing a set abstraction, so we're not worried about duplicates anyway. Okay, the next one that you study in 2420 is a map. But maps are just like sets. What's the difference? Yeah? Yeah, Say it again. The key axis is the hash value. Well, there's a key and a value, right? So the, the so the, I guess the difference is that with a set, they're just keys. With a map, there's keys and values. So you, you, you rather than just looking up to see if the key is in a set, you look up the value associated with the key in a map. Yeah. It's like a hash set minus the hashing of blues. Well, it's if you, re you represent a map with a hash hash table. And you're still doing hashing, you still have collisions. It's just that right next to the key, a value is stored. Like the key is the name, the value is the phone number. If you want to look up the phone number, you provide the key, you provide someone's name, and it efficiently finds the number. So how do you represent a map? Yeah? Right, you can use either the technology you use for set. You can use a binary search tree, you can use a hash table. What's the only change you have to make? You just have to have a reference to the value. Right, everywhere you store the key, right next to the key, somehow you've got to store the value. The key is what's used for the hashing, for the searching, and everything else. But when you finally find the key in the table or the, or the tree, you're usually interested not in the key itself, but in the, in the value that goes with it. So there's really nothing more to say about maps, except it's exactly the same technology. I mean, you see that in, uh, in Java. You've got hash sets, hash maps, tree sets, tree maps. Same technology, just an extra field to sort the value with each key. Yeah? So like in the C++ standard library, that's why there's unordered set and ordered set, right? It's like the difference in implementation? I'm trying to remember. Maybe someone else could answer the question. Yeah. Is that it? Ordered set and unordered set are just those two? It's, it's actually due to an artifact of how the language was constructed. Okay. It is why they exist. It, essentially, for hackers' compatibility purposes, they both exist. Okay. Okay. Well, there is a next topic I was going to do, but I'm not going to try to do it in four minutes. So let's uh, <laughs> in there and we'll do it. Uh, you get a long weekend anyway. Enjoy your Monday. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>